You speak about accomplishments. You speak about your family. Let's talk about those two because I got to believe that is your greatest accomplishment to date. Is your wife or your children? Did you meet your wife after the the disease starts kicking in or before? I actually met my wife after I ended up in a wheelchair. Really? Yeah. We used to work together for the same uh, company. It was a timeshare company. So we come from corporate America backgrounds and we met, she was already working there when I got there. And then we just wound up uh, hanging out with the same kind of group at the job and going out. You know, that's when I moved from New York to Florida. How, how, um, how long, how long before we get into the story, how long have you and your wife been together? We've been together for 17 years. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And we've been together 17 years uh, and married. Uh, This year, we're going to be celebrating 13 years married. Incredible. Congratulations. Congratulations. So you're in this wheelchair. Where the hell do you get the confidence to talk to your wife? Yo, sometimes even nowadays, man, I look at my wife and I'm like, I don't even know how I scored that one. (laughs) (laughs) But, um. You know, I, I always, that's one of the things too, man. Like when I was younger, I never had a problem with the females. I was always like a, like a ladies man. I was like a, like a smooth operator, you know what I mean? But on a friend level, and if it turned into something, then it turned into something. But I was never like that over pushy type of dude either. But my wife always tells people when they ask her that question, you know, she, first of all, when I moved from New York to Florida, I still had that that uh that New York swag in me, you know what I mean? My wife says she, she still had that little thug look because I had the chain with the New York hat to the side and the little baggy clothes or whatever. But she just kind of fell in love with my swag, my attitude, my personality. That's that's another plus that I think I've been I've been blessed with is a great personality. I'm always joking and you know, like I said, looking at the glass half full and not half empty. But <clears throat> Um, yeah, we met, you know, in work, and we just, we, we, we really, um, in all honesty, we were just, we just were just straight good friends. Then we just turned into best friends, and then the attraction started kicking in little by little. We would go to the movies and go here and go there, and then we just had a conversation. Like, I'm, she was like, I'm feeling you. I was like, I'm feeling you too. <laughs> and it just turned, it kind of just like, just kept on developing from there. And it even took me a while to actually ask her out, like to be my official girl, like make it official, you know, cause we went on a couple of dates, but it wasn't nothing, you know, it wasn't nothing um, serious. And, and it even took me a little bit to like, cause in my mind, man, to be honest, for, for you, um, uh, Sean and your listeners, there's always something in the back of your mind that says like, you're not good enough for this one, you know? You're not good enough for this one. She's, she's like, she's not in your league, man. And there was always something in the back of my mind, like, man, if I ever even dared to approach her in that way, would it, like, how long would it last before she said, I can't deal with this? Mm-hmm. You know, so that little conversation was, like, my whole life, man, that, that conversation was, like, a factor in the back of my head. And even, I got, and thinking back, like, to all my girls in high school, you know, or when I'm in my younger years, that, like, one of the questions I would ask them was, like, you know, I, you know, if this thing gets, you know, worse, are you going to still love me forever? Like, that was a question I would always ask them. And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but it wasn't a big deal back then. But my wife that I'm with, her name is Andrea, by the way, you know, she, she met me in a wheelchair. She fell in love with me in a wheelchair. She loves me unconditionally in a wheelchair. And for that man, like, I always tell everybody, like, if I wasn't this huge influencer and reaching the levels of success that I reach right now, and it was just me and my wife, my ride or die, I would die a happy man, bro. Cause that was my main dream. I know everybody has the dreams of becoming wealthy and success and cars and houses and all of that. And that's great. You know, I, I've had those dreams too, but my main dream was always wondering if a woman was going to love me like this. That's so beautiful. Oh, so beautiful. And I don't think you realize, but just, hearing this there's somebody out there who is not in a wheelchair but they're asking themselves these same exact questions so mm-hmm. to hear the way you just articulated it I, I think you're going to help really give people confidence that are all around this world that are asking themselves that same question i love that story yeah man yeah you know and i even have boys that i'm that i grew up with in high school that i'm still friends with to this day that they used to carry me on their back. And the funny thing is that, that they'll tell people like, you know, there were so many years that I was carrying you physically, 
but you don't even know, my brother. You there were so many times that you were carrying me and you didn't even know it. Wow. What a gym, man. Okay. Yeah. So and I don't know how to ask this tactfully, but I'm gonna try my best. You <laughs> have a disease where your muscles, your muscles literally don't work. Is is that correct? Yeah. Well, it's not that they don't work, they're they're very weak. Okay, they're very I can, I can still feel and move everything. I can move my legs. I can move my feet. Like if you put me in a pool, you'll see that I'm moving my legs. I'm moving my arms. So they're not that they don't work. They're just the, the muscles are deficient because they're lacking that, 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 that one neuron that causes the muscle to function properly. So since there's a deficiency in that, it causes them to get weak. So I can still move everything. Like I said, feel everything, move everything. That's one of the questions a lot of people get like, you know, with my wife and I, like, oh, so you guys, you know, you had your kids the normal way? And I'm like, yeah, you know. Because that, that's where I'm going. I'm like, okay, because your wife has to be, I'm sure you wanted kids, you wanted a family, and I've you know, got to believe your wife wanted the same thing. But that's a question you guys had to have, or that's a conversation y'all had to have had, you know, before this thing really progressed. Yeah, you know, and uh, the thing is, is that <laughs> most people think that that, the male, the male anatomy and what we carry is a muscle. It's not a muscle. It's just tissue that gets filled with blood. That's how, that's how the male gets erected. That, that's, there's no muscle involved with that. It's just, it gets filled with blood. So, um, yeah, so, I, you know, we, 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 have, we do our thing, you know what I'm saying? And we had that conversation in the beginning, and then, you know, once she, uh, <laughs> you know, we try to keep this PG, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, once she, once she found the hidden gem, you know, she was like, all right, this engine, <laughs> this engine still revs, you know what I mean? I'm good. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. <laughs> What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.